It's been said that God leads every man he loves through a desert at some point in his life. Whether it's a spiritual or physical journey, some say that the arid wilderness reminds a man of just how much he needs God. Others view the desert as a glimpse of hell on earth. To the late Johnny Cash, the desert was the devil's playground. It's a hell of a place that he has for a hell. The heat in the summer is 110. Too hot for the devil, too hot for men. Whatever view you take, history has proven though dry and desolate, the desert of eastern Arizona has provided the United States with one of the richest copper deposits in the world. First discovered over 140 years ago at a campsite known as Clifton, the copper deposits in Greenlee County would help fuel the Industrial Revolution and aided the nation in World War II. Today, the cities of Clifton and Morency are home to the largest copper mine in North America, the Morency Open Pit. Operated by Freeport McMoran, the Morency Mine produces an average of 800 million pounds of copper every year. New copper discoveries are rare, and many historic mines across the country are seeing reserves dwindle. But with its deep roots, the Morency Open Pit continues to deliver year after year. Since the beginning of mining operations, the railroad has been the backbone of the Morency Open Pit. And as long as the ground has copper to mine, the railroad will continue to move it. In fact, Freeport McMoran operates its own industrial railroad that carries chemicals, equipment, and copper from the mine in Morency to Clifton, where it interchanges with Genesee and Wyoming's Arizona Eastern Railway. Genesee and Wyoming is a short-line holding company that operates 122 railroads worldwide. The Arizona Eastern Railway was acquired in 2011 from Iowa Pacific Holdings and is composed of two branch lines, the Globe Branch and the Clifton Branch. The Clifton Branch extends out of Lordsburg, New Mexico, running north about 60 miles to its namesake city. From Clifton to the mine at Morency, Freeport McMoran's Industrial Railroad must battle one of the steepest active railroad grades in the United States a 5% climb up Shannon Hill, which includes a runaway track, much like the world-famous Saluda Grade in North Carolina. Nearly 1,000 feet in elevation separate Clifton and Morency, a distance of five miles by railroad. Every morning, Freeport McMoran descends the grade with outbound loads for Arizona Eastern. On this day, four Jeeps were used to conquer the rugged railroad.
Beginning in 1879, a plethora of baby gauge railroads would connect dozens of small mines in the area. In 1883, the Arizona and New Mexico built a narrow gauge line from Clifton to Lordsburg. By 1901, it had been converted to standard gauge so that cars could be interchanged more easily with Southern Pacific's Sunset Route. In the preceding years, two narrow gauge lines were built from Morency to Clifton. The two roads combined formed a network with hundreds of miles of track between the major copper mines. The copper boom would continue through World War I, but following the war, the industry saw a major decline when copper prices plummeted. To survive, consolidation was the only option. The remaining mines merged to form the Phelps Dodge Corporation. Rail operations were also consolidated, with the two narrow gauge lines restructured as the Morency Industrial Railroad. By 1924, Southern Pacific had also secured a long-term lease of the Clifton branch. Phelps Dodge would continue to operate the narrow gauge railroad from the mine to Clifton, but by 1932, mining operations were completely shut down. In 1937, as the nation continued to struggle through the Great Depression, the mine was reopened and expanded to include a standard gauge electrified railroad. In addition, the Morency Industrial Line was converted to standard gauge with switchbacks, which streamlined operations from end to end. The smelter at Morency opened just before World War II, which was excellent timing for Phelps Dodge, which would see a renaissance of copper production during wartime. After the war, the mine and railroad would continue to expand, with trackage extending over 90 miles to the bottom of the pit. Complete with ABS signals, the railroad was entirely operated by mine employees. Electrified operations ended in 1955, with Phelps Dodge replacing its roster of older electrics with first-generation EMDs. Ten years later, the railroad from Morency to Clifton would be rebuilt again to handle higher traffic volumes. Even though the switchbacks were replaced, the 5% Shannon Hill grade remains and continues to be an operational challenge for Freeport McMoran. Southern Pacific would continue to operate the Clifton branch until 1996, when the Southern Pacific Union Pacific merger was completed. In 2007, Phelps Dodge was acquired by Freeport McMoran, which has since invested over $2 billion into the Morency mine. The following year, Union Pacific sold the line to Iowa Pacific Holdings, which purchased the Clifton branch as part of their new Arizona Eastern Railway. In 2011, Genesee and Wyoming purchased the line from Iowa Pacific and continues to serve Freeport McMoran with reliable rail transportation. One of the biggest changes was the railroad's decision to replace a mix and match fleet of aging locomotives with a uniform fleet of Dash 840Bs. Before the change, Freeport struggled to plan shipments since some locomotives could pull more than others and packing the same commodity into different car types added delays and expense to the loading and unloading process. A uniform fleet has helped to streamline operations between the two railroads at Clifton. Arizona Eastern interchanges with Freeport McMoran Mondays through Fridays and occasionally on weekends. Usually, G&W crews arrive between 10 and 11 a.m. to meet the Industrial Railroad at the bottom of the steep grade in Clifton Yard. 
Each Freeport McMoran locomotive is limited to five cars when climbing up the hill. Since today's train has four units, up to 20 cars could be pulled up the grade. Often, FMI takes delivery of 80 car trains, and because of this, multiple trips are needed throughout the day, offering rail fans the opportunity to document the industrial railroad at various locations throughout the day. With their train now in tow, we would jump ahead of the FMI to focus our lenses on the runaway track. Here, the conductor will throw the switch on the fly, making sure it's lined properly in case the next train becomes a runaway. This is one of the steeper sections of the FMI, but the steepest portion is further upgrade on Shannon Hill. After capturing the FMI battling its torturous hill, we would follow the bright orange locomotives of the Arizona Eastern as they left Clifton for Lordsburg, New Mexico. Both locomotives on today's train were built for Southern Pacific in 1987. The modern GEs have proven to be reliable locomotives in the desert climate, so much so that other G&W roads have since acquired more GE locomotives.
Only a few miles south of Clifton, Arizona Eastern battles a 2.2% grade that winds through the rugged desert terrain and punches through six short tunnels. These breathtaking vistas are what brings rail fans from all over the world to this rural part of the Grand Canyon State. <laughs>